I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to do a few more things with a couple of LOVs, lists of values. We will also create an interactive report based on an SQL query instead of directly off of a table. We will modify the display of the phone number using some SQL code in an LOV. This is useful within the US where we know the exact phone number format. We will take a look at the download option available in Apex. We'll compare the interactive grid and the interactive report. An interactive grid allows you to enter and edit data, and an interactive report gives you a lot of sorting and filtering features, but you cannot alter the data. So I'm logged in to Apex as the developer, Carlo Mora. So we see how I'm logged in. I'm going to go into the Development application. I'm going to go into Shared Components and I'm going to go into List of Values. In the previous video, we did a correction to the supervisor list. I want to go in and make another change here. I'm showing last name, first name, and then purse, purse ID. I actually want to change that to match the return value. So I'm going to take employees.impid and replace that in the display column so that we see the name and we see the imp ID. You may or may not actually want that in a form, but I like to see that as we're going through development to make sure that the right value is selected and stored in the table. So I will apply that change. Then I want to take a look at the zip list. This is showing zip, city, state. I'm going to leave that alone, but I will make a copy of that and rearrange the display. So I want to make a copy of the zip list, which is off the screen. And I'm going to call this the city, state, 
zip list and make a copy and here it is and I want to rearrange the order. I will pause the video while I do that. So, whoops, I have a uh, typo here. I have city followed by a comma and a space followed by state, a comma and a space and then zip and I will apply that change. Now I'm going back to the application and I want to create a page and this will be a report and it will be an interactive report and this will be called RPT Employees. Click Next. I'll have a navigation item added and I'll put that under People. Then this will be based on a query rather than a table. So I'm going to copy in the code and then talk about it. So I've copied in this code where I want to see purse underscore ID that field appears in both tables that I'm going to use, persons and employees. So I must precede the column with the table name. That's called a fully qualified column name. So I'm looking at first name, middle name, last name, address, zip, supervisor ID, so on and so forth. Again, because date created and date modified appear in both persons and employees, then I must specify which of these I want to use. And for my purposes right now, it doesn't make a lot of difference. But I have to specify and give a fully qualified column name. This is coming from the table persons with an inner join on employees. And the matchup is for the purse underscore ID field in both tables. But I'm also filtering where status is equal to active. Because I'm joining persons with employees, we automatically filter out any persons that are not listed in the employees table. So I can check the code. So this is valid code. We will click create and run that. So we see RPT employees on the left hand navigation pane and we see the report here. Now what I want to do is I want to replace the zip code right here at, with the LOV display where I have city state zip. So I will edit the page. On the left side select columns. Go to the zip field and instead of plain text I want plain text based on a list of values. And then I have to select the list of values and that's going to be the city state zip which is just off the screen on my selection. So I can save that and run that. So now I'm seeing city state zip in this column which is much more user friendly in a report. So now I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to format the phone number. I will come back to page designer to the application itself, shared components, list of values and I want to create a list of values. This is going to be from scratch and I'm going to call it phone number format list and it will be dynamic and I will copy in the code. I'll pause the video. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the substring function and I'm pulling out the first three characters from the phone number field, adding a period, then getting the next three numbers from the phone number field, adding a period, and then finally taking the last digits in the phone number field, the last four digits. And I will create this list, come back to my report, edit this page, notice my phone number, Go to Columns, go to Phone Number, plain text based on an LOV, and here's my phone number format list. I can save that and run that, and I now see area code period 
first three characters of the phone number period and the last four characters of the phone number. While I'm here, I would like to remind you that we can filter and I would like to filter on, let's filter on this city El Paso and go. And I see that I have four records. I have four people, excuse me, I have four employees that come from El Paso. So I can click on actions and click on download and download as CSV, comma, separated value. And I'm putting it in a temp folder, an animal shelter folder, and I will click save and then launch that. That automatically opens up Excel. So take a look, this is pretty neat. Even though I'm only storing, even though we are only storing the zip code field, we are getting the city state because of that list of values. We are also getting the formatting for the phone number. And we're only getting the records we filtered on. So the download feature is pretty sophisticated and very useful. So the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an interactive grid. I will not create it on an SQL query because an updatable query is a little more complicated topic than what we have here. If you're going to actually want to allow data entry and edits, then you're probably going to want to use a single table in most cases and not worry about creating a query that is updatable. So I'm going to use this as our example of the interactive report and notice I cannot edit anything here. I simply can use it, filter on it, sort, so on, but I cannot edit data. Let me go back to the application or I'm back in page designer and I will add a page. And this will be a report, but it'll be an interactive grid and so I'm going to do grid, and this will be persons, just to illustrate how this looks and how this works. So click on Next and create a navigation item, put it under People, and this will be based on a table. Editing enabled, I will select Yes, and I will select Persons. And the primary key column is going to be purse ID. I will click Create. And I will run that. This looks very much like the interactive report. However, out to the left, what we see is the option for row option. In other words, I can add a row. I can delete a row. I can click inside a field and make a change because I did the enabled edit. If you forget to do enabled edit, you can fix that in editing the page. So in the design of your application, you will have to make some decisions as to whether you want a form view, which I can get here. I can switch over to single, single row view, but then I have to click edit again. We've already seen other examples of forms where we don't have to go through those steps. But I want you to be aware that you have the interactive grid, truly interactive, versus the report or interactive report. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.